like when the car broke down, I was like, I shave this baby. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> like, That's a coping like, mechanism. Yeah. 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 Slightly yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Sherlax Team Podcast with me, Charlotte Collins. This week, I'm joined by Polly Sayer, Sherry Andrew, and a very, a very welcome new addition to the sofa. <laughs> Hi, Lucky. Hi. Hi. I mean, you did. I was going to say this is your first podcast. No. No. Not. You is tried and tested. This is oh. a very 360 moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> when did you do? You did the first test podcast. Whenever we first ever did the first ever Sherlax mm, podcast. I'm going to say that was like end of 2016 beginning of 2017 yeah. maybe yeah a good five or six seven something like that yeah let's hope we don't wait another seven years yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have <laughs> one shot <laughs> don't mess you up. don't see me again it didn't go well <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> tomorrow is my seven year anniversary at Sherlock is oh, it oh, congratulations happy anniversary thanks, so much. thanks I feel like people I never talk about their work anniversaries no mm. apart from on LinkedIn do you know what, well, do you, the only mm. reason I really realised was because I was getting all these emails saying, you, like, people were DMing me on LinkedIn, and I thought, oh, maybe I've been hacked, maybe, but, people, <laughs> but like, people were just saying, congratulations on your work anniversary. Oh, because it announced yeah. a network for exactly. you. Mm. Exactly, exactly. Anyway. That's the only reason I use LinkedIn. What, to, to know see. when people's so work like, I'm like, how long have I worked there? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I thought you meant to check in on other Oh, people. I just always congratulate so people that you on their work can, anniversary. So that you can pay back. <laughs> it's worth having an LinkedIn just for that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're recording this podcast after lunch, and we were just soundtrack talking about our lunches um sherry yours sounded lovely yes i had a bowl of vegetarian thai green curry pot nice. which was you know what sometimes those pots i find a bit sad this they one are. was delicious not sad mm. not sad not sad um hodge has them a lot actually as well i always made it really cozy and warming yeah like. they are if you want something hot mm. great shout very cold day today mm. you on the other it hand is. what did you have <laughs> well obviously i had an egg and crust sandwich from brett <laughs> you, did you have it in the office though or did you save everyone that, i had that it treat? on the bus yeah. in the way oh, yeah. oh that's even worse <laughs> I was like, egg and who would I rather offend? The people in the office, the people on the bus. Obviously, it's the people on the bus. I don't know them. <laughs> they got the egg and crust sandwich. But yeah, you were about to make fun of her. You eat, you have weird egg eating habits too. I don't think they're weird. And actually, I think a lot, they've come out with a second version of it now. So it's obviously not that weird. People must love it. But I like a good um, Starbucks Sue's egg bite. Is that what it's called? Egg bite. It's I said egg cake. French pronunciation. What's an egg Sue. bite? Sue. They're like little, <laughs> they're like little round egg balls but flat it's hard isn't to an egg, egg, egg balls, balls. <laughs> it's so not disgusting. no no okay so imagine like you whipped up the mixture of the mini omelets a whole egg oh yeah, and then it's like cooked in water but it's got ham and cheese in it it's cooked like, like oh, soup. Nice. That's soup. Soup. Yeah. okay that sounds like I've seen those yeah I've never had Starbucks food ever. So they do. Oh, Interesting. Well, you never yeah. had a panini back in the day. No. I used to like a Starbucks panini. No. No, I don't really eat Starbucks food either. Oh, miss, are we missing out? No. Well, it doesn't sound like I it. I love these egg things. I'm really into Sorry, it. so what is the version you like and what is the new version? Ham and cheese is the original mm. and now they do a pepper and cheese one. And do you, have, you, do you have them on like bread or something? No. That's why I get them because the they're gluten free. The <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the only gluten free product you can buy from Starbucks, I think. Understood. So, is okay. it? Mm. That is my well, motivation. Do you, do you have them for breakfast or for lunch? Sometimes. Yeah, breakfast. Yeah. Oh, no, not enough for lunch. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, I, I meant, you know, as like a side for your lunch. Yeah, no, I have them as a breakfast every now and again. What did you have lunch mm. today? Not every day. Um, today I had coronation chicken. Oh, so that's the reason <gasps> I, I just saw it. Because I saw it and I thought it was an egg bite. <laughs> I love coronation chicken. I like coronation chicken. chicken. <laughs> On um, gluten free oat cakes and then that. a little itsu rice pot thing. That's quite know. an eclectic. Yeah, that, combo. that is eclectic. I wanted something hot, but I also wanted something like quick what? to eat. I had literally filling. five minutes mm. to eat it. Yeah. Did what? you buy the pre made like filling yeah. coronation chicken? Yeah. Do you not and I do you know find the I raisins do... are too much for me. Well, if it was so successful, it. I would honestly eat that out of the pot without anything else. <laughs> yeah, I no, I'm with you. I, do you <laughs> know what I didn't know it existed <laughs> I, but I saw it in Waitrose this week and it's I think that looks delicious. Yeah. yeah. You know, Georgie what do you asked mean me with that? Coronation well. chicken? I feel like that's what grandmas eat. No offence to grandmas. It's stand in the test it's, Yeah, it's quite retro. It's quite 70s. Yeah, yeah. but I don't the, think... The flavour's good, though. But you can't be like... There are things in life that you can be judgy about, like, if you so wish, like, that are like, <laughs> oh, that's like what I did, like, 10 years ago, like, 50 years ago. But I don't feel like food is in that category. It is if you eat an egg mm. and press sandwich you. on the bus. You judge me for eating my eggs all the time. Not because it's dated though, but because it's gross. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> You're still judging me though. So, yeah, yeah. Line. No, I do choose to judge you on your food. That's true. <laughs> Sorry, um, I have the right to judge you on your coronation chicken. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. Um, what did everybody do this weekend, Maya? What did you get up to? I went to Boccaccino's for dinner and then Greek Street. It was fun. fun. Oh, that is yeah, fun. Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. That is fun. I haven't been to Boccaccino's for a very long time. Uh, the food was exceptional, I have to say. Was it really? It was really good. Italian. Yeah. 
Yeah, delicious. Mm. Good to know. Mm. Cherry, what did you do? Yummy. I had uh, a pizza night on Friday, nice. which isn't actually as fun as it sounds, but the, the funnest <laughs> bit was actually, actually no, that's a lie, it was great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah you it sound like your pizza. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun, but the best nice. bit was actually making the dough, and I, my house is really cold, so I was like, it's not rising, my dough's gonna, it's gonna be a disaster, mm. and then I put it in, um, my mum has a heated era, game changer, okay. and then it rose beautifully. Oh, how nice. That's so, so yeah. good. And sorry, what did you cook it on? Or like in the pizza. oven? Yeah, yeah, in the oven. Okay, Just okay. in the oven. And did you prove your dough for a long time? Yeah, I did. That was for an the hour. Proving. No, that was the proving. Long? I know, so, but how long for? Uh, so the first proof is two, mm. is an hour, mm. and then you separate it into what you want the dough to be. So two balls, mm-hmm. and that was another like 40 minutes. Okay, that's um, not bad. And it came out really nicely. Oh, did it? What yeah. toppings did you put on, Jock? I had some mushrooms, some red pepper, a red onion and some, you know those jar chilies that are like a little bit sweet. Oh yeah. yeah. They're quite yeah, spicy, yeah. some of those. Mm. It was nice. Nice. Yeah. That's fun. I actually bought Ben for Christmas a, um, we've got a green egg uh, barbecue and I bought him the ceramic base for pizzas. Uh, yeah. So you can do pizza making. I know and we bought all the gear and haven't done anything yet, but it's been quite cold. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So we've got one of those uni pizza ovens. Oh, that was my, on. I think my present to Matt for his birthday last year. Mm. And like actually it was really, um, like it's really great. I love it, but it's mm. quite like, I don't know, like, it's a lot to get it out. <laughs> it is a lot of effort. And you can only cook pizzas in there, so it's quite like a big piece of kit. But do you know what? It makes good pizzas. Well, you so. would hope so. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It has one job. Yeah, you would hope. Yeah, actually, yeah. quite nice to be able to do it in the oven. Did you get, like, a good, like, charring on it? Or Yeah, it actually yeah, came out really well. Great. I was like, well, well done. Well, yeah, pass yeah. to the back. Great. Exactly. Great. Anything else? Um, oh yeah, that was just Friday. Um, <laughs> oh, God, rest. Well, uh, no, I went to Frameless on Saturday morning, oh, cool. which is a new exhibition space just by Marble Arch Station, and all of the art is projected on. They have four different rooms, so it's projected on the walls, the ceiling, and the floor. And as you go, and it kind of moves with you. Mm. It's really cool. It's actually really cool for kids as well because mm. they can like run mm. around and interact, and each room is based on a different type of. I guess movements. You've got mm. Dali, you've got Van Gogh, and all these like famous artists. It's really cool. That's really cool. That is yeah, cool. yeah. I, I, see, and I, I also saw it was Blue Monday yesterday, and I saw they were doing free visits to, like Chippy Blup for. Oh, that's, that's nice. nice. That's, nice. that's nice. very cool. Yeah, really so, cool. So yeah, if you you'd recommend it, I'd recommend it. Yeah, okay. nice. you could spend at least an hour and a half. It's quite oh. long. I thought it'd be quite quick, but yeah. it you have to kind of sit in the room and wait for the art to change on the walls. Um, so yeah, it's really okay. cool. That's cool, fun. different. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Polly, what did you get up to? I had quite a quiet one, to be honest with you. I quite like it in January, not having that many plans. And Matt was still on his ski trip on Saturday. So I just took myself off and went like, to the shops. Oh. Bought myself some AirPod Max headphones, which mm. are amazing. I love them. Like, highly recommend. The sound is incredible. And that was probably the highlight of my weekend. They look very cool. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Good investment. As we've yeah. discussed, it's all about how they look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give a shit about the point. Oh, yeah. Fact, I'm actually not listening to anything. Just, <laughs> you've got, got AirPods on underneath. <laughs> On top. <laughs> I actually do that a lot, you know. As in, I put my AirPods in and I don't put any music on. Why? Oh, I just kind of like the feeling of them in my do ears. You? Yeah, really? I sometimes I like the fact that you can pause it and listen to people's conversations, <laughs> but they don't know that you're listening Sneaky. in. That's what yeah. I like about an over ear headphone is that you like that's very obvious that you're wearing a headphone, so you can just sort of listen. Or it gives off "Don't talk don't to talk me" vibes. Yeah, yeah. even that's if you true. are listening to any music, it's just like "Don't talk to me." Mm. Yeah, I feel like all headphones perform that function. Yeah. yeah. Today that I got on the tube to come to the office and there was a girl sat with a friend or a colleague and she looked so cool. She was wearing, you know, my La Double J puffer. She was wearing like another version of that. It's oh, like yeah. a really cool printed one. And then she was wearing trousers that I think were also La Double J and they were knitted patterned. Oh. And she just looked so, she's wearing big black boots and a black pony neck. And so I just really wanted to know who she was. And so I tried to listen to her conversation, but it was a Victoria <laughs> line. I couldn't hear anything. So I just put my music back on. Oh, so, I shame. Shame. I tried. I tried. <laughs> what um, would you have done with that information? Just followed just, her on Instagram. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, had a, had a stalk. Yeah. I've had a stalk. Not done the message follow up. No. Oh, I, was I, was nice to you. <laughs> I would not have done that. That's my least favourite thing. People obviously very kindly to see us out and about and and send a message, but we, we do always think it's funny if people you like say hello, which is lovely, yeah, or just busy. think, you know. That's Maya from Sherlock and yeah. leave, but it's it is always a bit strange when people a message. Follow up message. Oh, yeah. I saw you today, and it's like that's nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great. I followed you for ten minutes from the Northern Lights. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I followed you the whole length of the Victoria Line to see your jacket today. Yeah, I will not be yelling at that. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. Anyone been watching anything good? Anything to recommend, Maya? What have you been watching? I mean, I did start Love Island last night. Can't say it was that good. To be perfectly honest, no. Oh. I feel like it I, takes a while to warm up. I always though. think the mm. first episode is like snooze. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Snooze. like when when they're introducing themselves, what they do. They obviously all lie and put on a bit of a performance mm. so 
It hasn't hooked me yet. Okay. Yeah, mm. you're right. The first episode's always rubbish, though. I just can't do it at this time of year. But don't you no. think it's almost, like, better than the summer? Because in the winter, you don't have any plans or yeah. as many plans. Whereas in the summer, I'm like, God, I'm, like, trying to juggle my social life. Like, juggle Love yeah. Island. Like, I think had it always been in winter, I would agree, agree with you. Yeah. But it's so, like, it feels like summer to me. Yeah. So yeah. I just can't get my hair. Yeah. And it's such now. a suck, isn't it, on your, like... Time. On your time. Yeah. And, mm. like, I was like, I'm not really sure I can sort of in good conscience commit, commit that much of my life to Love Island twice a year. Agreed. Yeah, that's true. true. Yeah, I'd say I'd rather save myself a summer. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It Excuse is definitely I also saying. felt like last season really like tainted me a little bit. Like I thought the boys were just such assholes. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know how you get that kind of misogyny and gaslighty culture out of there because mm, of yeah. the nature of the game. Mm. And I just thought yeah, oh, lost me. We'll get yeah. 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 yeah, they're not really progressing with it, are they? No, so, no. Twenty year old boys are just yeah. a bit silly. Yeah, and they are kind of right. like without doubt at this point in the game, all going on it to get to be to famous. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, there's no element I think at this point of people genuinely going on it for love. Whereas like no, in the first few series, you were kind of like, yeah, yeah, I sort of believe that you yeah. are going on it for that. Yeah. Um, but we shall see whether I end up watching yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Maya Jammer looked yes. oh, unreal. Yeah, she is oh my so god, she's unreal. Isn't she? Yeah, good presenting yesterday. Um, I would say mm. <laughs> the jury's oh, really? out. Okay, she's somewhat awkward in some places. She lacks enthusiasm. Oh, oh, oh. Which is interesting. Sorry, okay. Maya. <laughs> well, I hope she's listening. A bit of constructive feedback. Um, that's interesting. She's yeah. quite a cool customer. She's very cool. Yeah, mm. it's just you know like, you need like a bit of banter backwards and forwards. I don't think she's got it there yet. But it is the first episode. I'm gonna say, I'm not let's sure. give, yeah, her give her a chance. Yeah. Yeah. If it were me, I'd want someone to cut me yeah. some slack. <laughs> <laughs> she says having hosted the show once. <laughs> <laughs> very well received. Um, I feel like Laura Whitmore was a bit crap at that as well. Yeah, but she just had a lot of enthusiasm. She was an enthusiastic mm. person. Yes, she will. Mm. Yeah. I don't think yeah. my jammer yeah. is a particularly okay, interesting person. So it's too cold oh. on screen. Yeah. yeah. And I don't mean she's a bad presenter. I mm. just think, you know, she's quite laid back, cool. Yeah. That's too her chill. Attitude, yeah. You know yeah, you're right. right. Maybe there's some drama for her yeah. to get, yeah. like, get stuck into. Maybe mm. she's too cool for Love Island because Love Island is not yeah, that cool. Maybe, mm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Interesting. But actually, what I am obsessed with is Happy Valley. Oh, oh nice. I've heard it's so, so good. Yeah. People, so this is. What is this? This is a new series. This is a no. So I can't remember if it's second or third now, but it's been going going on for quite a while. Mm. It's ITV. It's about a woman in particular in the police force in Halifax, and sort of all the drama that goes along with it, including her own family and some really dark things that happen in her life and her children's life, etc. Um, but it is amazing. Like, is it? yeah. What What's Ooh. so amazing about it? Like, is it twist and turny? Yeah. It's well, it's super dark because the things that happen to people. It's obviously the police force. Mm-hmm. She's in the police force, and she's like one of these top detectives. But she has to go and investigate everything from like horrific murders, rapes, prostitution, mm-hmm. and her family are actually seem to be quite intertwined with a lot of what's happening. Okay. One main guy that, if you haven't watched it, maybe I won't say where he is right now, but he <laughs> is like a main thread throughout it, mm-hmm. and he keeps coming in and out of her life and. Yeah, it's just, it's entertaining, but it's dark and okay. makes you want to cry quite a lot. And is it, who, it's, is it Sarah Lancashire? I, is that her name? Yeah. The blonde, the blonde one, yeah. 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 I feel like, I feel like I've seen people praising it and talking about how mm. good it is. Okay. I, I, just, I just love the Northern yeah, accent. Me too, it's so great. Yeah. Oh, nice. well, um, when's it on? Uh, every Sunday now. Nice bit of Sunday telly. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Dreamy. You've also watched the Kardashian show. Yes. Yeah. Do t- tell us about oh. it. So this is the documentary about their rise to fame and how actually it's not accidental and it goes through each one of them from Kim to Kylie to Chris. I say those are the three that actually that it focuses on. They're the three mm. most interesting yeah. though, really, aren't they? And how they've all orchestrated a particular narrative for themselves, how they've sort of manipulated the media to, for it all to work in their favour and just the mastermind behind it all, basically. I watched the first episode. Ooh. Is that Kim? Because there's a bit of there's a bit of it's every or is that setting a bit it up? Of Chris. Yeah, and then it goes more into Kylie and her empire and how a lot of the she like faked this like billionaire name or millionaire yeah. name to actually work in her favor. Like no no press is bad press. Yeah. that sort of mm-hmm. thing. It basically shows you that like everything they've ever done, whether you think it's like a total embarrassment or not, it's is safe. is part of a yeah, strategy. Really. Yeah, it's crazy. Like so, that first episode, the one about Kim. They, they show her, like, like, at the beginning, she was doing things like opening. She, what was she cutting? Like, oh, a, a, sh- toilet. Like a toilet roll. <laughs> I don't know, no, stand it's a toilet, in a, An actual toilet. Was she revealing a toilet? Yeah, in, like, New York or something. Yeah, and she, but it was, like, Charmy, Charmin. <laughs> yeah. um, and she was, like, doing a cut, and it was, that was, like, a PA appearance. Yeah. And, like, she, every single thing has been... Pla- the rebrand on that, apart from Victoria Beckham, or Brand Beckham, I can't think of a more stunning rebrand mm. of something. It, it's yeah, just incredible right. how yeah. they've gone from that to, like... 
yeah. fashion world darling. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. And how her, I don't know what his title would have been. Would Whoever he was, he's like the, the man yes. behind it all, basically. Ooh. Like, even from when Kim brought out her first fragrance, someone flower bombed her on the catwalk, and it was covered by news everywhere about how someone had, you know, attacked Kim Kardashian. But it was staged yeah. to get media coverage. He's like, everyone launches a fragrance. No one's going to talk about no it. No one cares. Yeah. What's going to make it different? And she's you getting someone to flower bomb. Whether it's like smart or. Like, I think it's genius. It's, I think it's genius. Yeah, I think you can think it's genius and a bit gross at the same time. Yeah. Like it's it's mm. both. But mm. yeah. look where they are now. Yeah. And just no like how insane but... to. Yeah, it's, it's pretty shameless. Sh- yeah. Shameless, yeah. shameless. But oh, and also, wasn't there something about how when she got married, when when they filmed her marrying Chris on the show, yeah, she was already they got married ages ago. Like that was yeah. a fake wedding. They were previously married, and wow. then it oh. got annulled somewhat days later. Why? <laughs> really? I need to watch this. You do? Yeah, it's good. Wow. Yeah, where can we watch it? Is it Channel Four? Channel it's four. like more channel four, four, I think. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Channel Four. Again, catch another thirty minutes. There you go, mm. Sherry. What have you been yes. listening to, watching? So at the weekend, I binged Welcome to Chippendales, which oh, is, it's, so good. it's really good. It's on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. And it is about the Chippendales group, who were the group of male strippers, kind of like pre-Magic Mike, a little bit less, I wouldn't say less refined. Is Magic Mike <laughs> refined? <laughs> they're, male, they're male strippers, really. Um, but it's about the guy who founded the group, who was... Um, an immigrant to America from India, came from very humble beginnings. That was not his kind of career path. And then ended up putting all his life savings into opening a club in LA. And then it just so how happened to turn into this male strip club, as you do. Um, <laughs> but it's about his... Oh, see, so it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be a strip club. No, 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 no. Right. I think he tried to open like a backgammon club for oh, sure. gentlemen. Okay. Yeah. And then he meets lots of people along the way who then kind of create it into the Chippendales in like late 80s, early 90s that we know of. Um, so it's about his story and people who were involved. It's... It's just really good. Mm. But the thing is, it's it's very dark. So it's not the story that you think it will be. He is someone who gets a lot of fame and attention and he goes on quite a dark spiral. And there are lots of plot twists in there that you don't see coming. It's a true story as well. Mm, okay. Interesting. I had no idea about this. Yeah. I didn't yeah, even know. Either. Yeah. I mean... I'm not to... Uh, Chippendales weren't on my radar, per se. <laughs> okay. I don't uh, know the name, but that's about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's the whole story. Okay. Um, it's got a really good cast. Starring Nicola Peltz Beckham, am I right? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. And I mean, either. And her brother's in it as well. Quite a minor character. Oh, interesting. But the two of them, and Dan Stevens is in it. He's really great. Uh, he plays quite a crass American man. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think it's eight episodes, and it gets very dark very quickly, but really well. Like, it's not the most amazing thing I've ever seen, but on an entertainment value, it's, yeah, great. Okay. Good. Really good. Okay, good. I feel like Disney Plus is kind of where it's at at the moment. Yeah, it, it really, really is. is. Mm. Yeah. They had, I was looking and they had, like, there's so many films that have come out in the last few months that they now have. Oh, really? Because mm. I would say I've watched some good stuff on Disney Plus, but it's not frequent enough. I run out. I do agree with that. Quickly. I'm like, mm. am I going to watch The Parent Trap again? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Right. Polly, anything to recommend? Um, I've been watching Bad Sisters on Apple TV. It is just really, really good. And um, I started watching it again while Matt was away. And then since he's come back, I've been like, let's watch it together because I think we're going to really enjoy it. So I think okay. it in case anyone missed it the last time we talked about it. It's set in Ireland. Um, it's about five sisters. One of the sisters is married to a complete, um, they call him the prick. Um, and he is just the most awful, awful character. He's kind of emotionally abusive to his wife, who is one of the sisters. And they uh, basically it starts, uh, it's not a spoiler to say that it starts with him dead. So, and eventually like this, the sisters all kind of decide that they want him dead. But we don't know whether it's them who have done it he's died of natural causes so rather than it being a like who done it or why they've done it it's like a did they do it um but yeah it's just funny it's dark um very entertaining and yeah you really just like love to hate um the guy the, the husband mm-hmm. his name's john paul um but yeah loving it um nearly finished Ooh. actually but yeah it's, it's a really good watch. I did start it as one of those ones that Ben just cratched on without me. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. done that is so annoys annoying. Yeah. But I did, when he finished it, I was like, is this how, I only watched the first episode and I was like, oh, did it end like this? And he was like, yeah. I just, uh, felt, like, I just felt like maybe it was a bit predictable, but, yeah. but it was, it's really good. I feel um, like, yeah, like Matt and I have been like, I think it's going to end like this, yeah. but I'm still like, yeah, whatever, I'll still watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time, I yeah. just love Sharon Horgan. I know, she's such an yeah. icon, isn't she? Yeah, she's she really a little is. girl crush on her. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything she touches goes turns to gold, it I think. Does, doesn't it? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's 
my big recommendation. How about you? Do you know what? I've been sat, sat here racking my brains. I had I had grand plans after we spoke about the menu. I was like, okay, oh, I'm going to watch the menu. Oh my God, I love I haven't the done menu. it yet. You loved it. You loved it as well. I thought, because I do like kind of like dark weird thrillers as opposed to horror movies. It's yeah. different. Like, yeah, because I don't yeah. like horror, but yeah, I will watch either. something mm. like creepy and weird. Yeah. You, yeah. Did you say you've watched the menu? No, no, no it, was, it was my plan. Oh, okay. No. Well, it's so interesting because I've spoken to a few different people about the menu and it's been really divisive. Like mm. I loved it. I thought it was genius. And then a few other people have been like, what? Like I don't, I didn't get that. That was so weird, really unrealistic. And I'm like, well, that's not, you don't watch film for it always to be realistic. realistic. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think, I think if you watch it going into it and you love horror movies, then maybe you'll be disappointed because it's not that scary. Mm. I would say it's more like a thriller. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Um, but that's, that suits me. Yeah, yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to totally, chase Yeah, I'm like not interested in like being really scared. Yeah, you don't just... go to bed frightened. Yeah. No, you don't. And I just it's love yeah. like. <laughs> Chloe yeah. on our team compared it to Midsommar. Which yes. Would, oh my yeah. God, we yeah. felt the same. Okay, so yeah. Which yeah. is fine. I can do. Yeah. I, I watch that. We're I can like, have just giving... sick and dark and twisted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's fine. Twisted, yeah. like giving you like eerie vibes. <laughs> yeah, um, but like I just loved the like satire within it. I thought it was just so clever. Yeah, yeah it was. Really, like, Sherry, have you seen it? No, 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 no. Yeah, okay, on the list. Again, it's on the list. The list is very long. The list I have is long. I don't have enough hours in the day to watch all the TV that I want to. I still haven't watched So Horses season two as well, which I was like buzzing. I was like counting down the days, and then it dropped, and it's been like two months. Oh wow! Yeah, I know. What did you say? Slow Horses, okay. season two. Okay. Mm. So good. It's on Apple. It's, um, it, well, it's a series of books, but um, they turned it into a TV series. It stars Gary Oldman and Chris and Scott Thomas. It's a really good cast. And it's, it, the first series is, well, the whole thing is about Slow Horses is the name of a department in the Met Police for um, kind of outcasts, people who have really, really cocked up in their jobs. They're <laughs> sent off to this Slow Horses department. Um, and it's run by Gary Oldman, who plays this like disgusting, overweight, sweaty, farty, smoky, mm-hmm. gross character. Um, but he's actually really brilliant. There's a few storylines going on at once. There is a young, uh, a young boy who's been kidnapped by a very right-wing group. There is some sort of drama going on deep within the Met, some sort of conspiracy. And they're sort of, kind of all at once working out trying to unravel what's going on and kind of expose some baddies um in different areas but um yeah and then there's like so they kind of resolve some things and then something's left unresolved and there's some kind of russian twist and anyway re- like Ooh. honestly i can't recommend season one enough that does sound up my street I'm it's so it good it's, it's like a slicker glossier more expensive uh, line of duty oh nice okay. Is that right. okay yeah nice. anyway, it's really really good nice. but on the list. Two, yeah, on the list. There we go. <laughs> on the list. Um, it's very, very cold today. I thought we should talk a little bit about what we're wearing to combat the cold. We've got a lot of grey jumpers in the room <laughs> today. Um, Polly, what did you wear today? I mean, sorry, people are obviously watching this on camera, so whether you can see it or not, yes. let's describe it. Let's make it evocative. Thank Is that you. the word? Yeah. Um, for those who can't see what you're wearing. Layers is the key for me. It's all about the like Uniqlo heat tech um, under your main layers because... Mm. You can look like you're wearing like a normal outfit, but actually you're staying warm. So like oh, I've so got, got a, like a, I've got like a long sleeve under this. That's clever. I, I have to say I'm not wearing them right now, but this morning I was wearing my leggings when I went for a dog walk underneath my joggers and that did the job. Um, but I've got, you know, heat tech, jumper, blazer. And then I did also wear a puffer on top. Mm. Um, you can really that, is layered. <laughs> that is layered. That is layering. <laughs> but you know what? I, if I say so myself, <laughs> I think I look pretty cool. Um, <laughs> and the headphones. And the headphones. <laughs> I think it's all about those intentional layers mm-hmm. and like leaving them to be seen and la la la. And that's how you do it. Im- imo. My um, humble opinion. Imo. I thought the your puffer was really cool. Where's that from? Stan Studio. It's nice. actually on sale at the moment. Like coggles. Good and it's nice. so warm. It's, actually, it's quite lightweight as well. Like it looks big, mm-hmm. but I feel like you could pack it down a lot mm. and like shove it in a suitcase if you're going somewhere without it taking up that much room. Mm. So yeah, nice. very handy. Mm. Top tips all around. Sherry, what have you worn to stay cozy today? So my coziest thing actually that I own is this Cos jumper. I like it's quite of a high neck because then I don't have to wear a scarf. I really like that jumper. Mm. Oh, thank you. Um, mm. And then just some Nike leggings. These aren't actually that warm, but mm. as we know, I don't need to be yeah, that, that warm. That's true. So you are no <laughs> I'm yeah. girl. And then just boots and some cozy socks. Toasty. Nice. And that's nice. it. Yeah. Simple. Nice. Mine's gone brave. Right, I was yeah. going to say, yeah. you're sort of doing a half-half <laughs> not on the cozy front. I'm not front. sure I really dressed for this. <laughs> you did not get the brief. <laughs> you look great. You do look great. Can we talk yeah. about the boots? Yeah. So Maya yes. is wearing the boots that Georgie, uh, when, Georgie and I, when we went to New York, 
uh, tried on an Anina Bing and just died over, but they were like four sizes too big for her and she could just like fall them. They just fell off. So anyway, mm. you now are the proud owners of them. They're so good. Yeah, yeah. so cool. They are, re- and they're very comfortable, I must say, because they've got a bit of a heel to them. Mm. I've got a pair of Western boots as well that are flat, but these have got a nice heel to them. Yeah, yeah. it's a really good. Like comfy pair. enough just for like every day, but Definitely. I feel like you can wear them out. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, cross yeah. these mm. yeah. Need long, long legs like you though. They're actually not that long, these legs. I think so, these boots. <laughs> like, oh, you just wear a really these short skirt. Sure. Okay, no, so thank you. I think they're quite long, Maya, I have to say. <laughs> they're quite long. I have also got a very warm Aneen Bing jumper I was going to say, well. where's it from? <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> um, it does say Bing across the front, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think I actually can give any tips today on warm dressing because... Like I said, I haven't really dressed for No, again, for, so for those listening, you are wearing a, a teeny tiny... A very short skirt, short skirt. sheer black tights, mm. knee-high boots, and a jumper. Where's your short, short skirt from? ASOS, and it was oh. pennies. Have you done yeah. a polysea mm. and worn cycling shorts underneath? I feel like no, I'm perfectly looking. It looks like you're not. Yeah, flash. <laughs> <what> I can <laughs> see. Flash, but I actually do also run very warm, so I don't do need you? lots of layers. Oh, mm. lucky girls. If I did what you, you've done... I. You, I'd be stinking right now. You wouldn't want to sit really? next to me. Yeah. Well, I'm um, not hot, but I am stinking because I haven't had a shower. So. <laughs> <laughs> Polly's bathroom is mid renovation. Mid renovation. So. so the shower situation is not ideal. But I'm going to the going to the gym tonight, where I will treat myself to a wash. <laughs> <laughs> How is the bathroom coming on? Yes, I mean it's coming along. It's one of those things. that's like I know at the end it'll be so worth it. Yes, but um, it's just tricky, isn't it? When you're like, oh, like wake up. Have, oh no, I can't go for a shower. It's so uh, it's a shell of a room at the moment. Yeah, and I also feel like when it's very cold, you need that hot shower in the morning to, you know, to get your yeah, bones. Yeah. yeah, it is. Um, it's tricky, but we have so many kind like neighbours and people that live near us and whatever that have offered for us to use their shower and stuff. So we're like fine. We're covered and like, gosh, it could be so much worse, couldn't it? We're getting a nice bathroom out of it. But um, yeah, hopefully another like week and a half and it'll be done. Anyway, um, what are you wearing today? I am wearing, well, I also messed up a bit on the trouser front, a bit, well, you, you know, yours was deliberate, but I, these are, um, I'm wearing three people knitted, uh, kind of wide leg trousers, but they are quite holy. Like, mm. they're, you know what I mean? And they're the perforated. Open yeah, open knit, thank you. So actually, a little cool. Um, but, <laughs> and then I've got a jumper on, but actually I'm wearing these boots. I wore really the wrong socks. They're so offensive. I'm going to make sure they're hidden. Um, but these are from, I can never say it, Inui, Inuiki. I think you say Inuiki, yeah. Inuiki, yeah. yeah um, cool. Which are, I mean, they're kind of snow boots, but they're not, at, like, you couldn't wear them in the snow because they're suede. So yeah. they're like Winter city boots. snow boots. They are so cozy. Really I wore them yesterday um, with knit, like the pair of socks that we all love. And actually, I think because oh, they're fur dream. inside or like faux fur inside, um, the pair of socks kept falling down. So today oh, I went mm. the sports socks, which is why they're ugly, but doing the job yeah, top they're that ugly I think they've got a lot yeah they're quite them. cute yeah. they're, the, they're the Ami ones oh well they're not that ugly you've got Ami socks I think on just because they're Ami be I'm not sure that means that they're cool <laughs> we'll keep them that's best <laughs> could be a lot worse <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> let's do some questions someone's asked how is Lou getting on with her baby we won't, dwe- we won't dwell on Lou but she's doing really we well we won't dwell on Lou that sounds a bit mean <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> 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 mean it <laughs> no air time for you you're not here <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, it's not our news to talk about. No, true. Ha- but she's doing very well, isn't she? We she went and met the bubba, didn't we? Yeah, she's absolutely Aww. gorgeous. Tiny, 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 tiny little lady. lady. Okay, somebody said, what and whose interior style is inspiring your home? Have we talked about the bathroom reno on the podcast? No, I don't think so. What's what's the inspo? What's the finished product going to look like? Um, so the finished product, I guess, is quite art deco ish. Like it's got gold fittings. It's quite traditional. Um, I've got like a white marble sink that's kind of built in um, and a kind of pattern tile on the floor and a simple white tile, white rectangular on the walls. It's going to go up about halfway and then above that a nice kind of sagey green colour I think would be nice or maybe something slightly richer. I'm just going to see uh, what the paint samples look like when they're done. Um, But actually the inspo pick that I used was by um, an interior designer called, she's on Instagram, she's Finch Interior Design and just found her on Pinterest and then she was like oh this is my um design actually and I was like oh great because then I can just go and see like what you've used blah, blah, blah. um but she's great if you're into um if you want a new bit of inspiration um for interiors but yeah that's kind of the general vibe um we've got quite a small bathroom um that doesn't get any natural light so fairly limited on like options so try, trying to keep it as kind of light as possible um but we shall see like it's not our forever home so I didn't want to kind of go crazy on it um so yeah but I'm so I'm excited it's I actually 
<laughs> the builders took up obviously all the tiles, and under the floorboards there was a um, there were two cans of Fosters that from two thousand and seven. Saw that oh, on your Instagram. Oh, I was like, <laughs> see that? Okay, people were drinking on the job last oh, time, but apparently <laughs> it's a fairly is? common thing. Um, Don't but, they yeah. dispose of their rubbish? I know I did see this. Yeah, under the floorboards. Yeah, they just leave that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Wait, was it on that that you said that like people can leave things that are a lot worse? Well, someone messaged me right, and they were like, "Oh, make sure you um, give access to a toilet oh, um, the whole way through." Um, for your builders, because friends of ours um, decided to speed up their builders along and took away the portaloo to, to speed them along. That's so Which stupid. I think is it's fucking sadistic. To yeah, yeah, and also like, um, like just nasty. Really yeah. nasty. Um, so the builders then obviously relieved themselves in bottles and left them under <gasps> the things, which oh, to be honest with you is exactly what they deserve yeah, <laughs> for, yeah, for, for taking yeah. away the loot to speed them up. I mean, you literally have to keep your contractors on side because yeah. they are building your house. Yeah, so and like, that's so important. And also just treat people with respect. They're yeah. humans. Yeah. That's um, yeah. what, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, gosh, that's 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 wild. Wild. I didn't really think about it. Like, as, enough yeah. that's it's it so disgusting it's literally disgusting people. isn't yeah. it of, of, not of the builders yeah, um, yeah. I think yeah fair play to you if yeah. you're going to be treated like that then whatever needless to say we have a portaloo and we actually have a downstairs loo I was like well you can you can use our toilet and they're like no we brought a portaloo with us I was like great, oh, great. Like, fine <laughs> if you want to Charlotte where do you get your interiors inspo from just Instagram Instagram really Anyone but in not, particular though no not really because I'm like like obviously there are designers who I look at and think, God, that's so amazing, or people's homes, but there's no one home that, I, that I've ever seen where I'm like, it's that, like that's what I'm going okay. for. So it's more just like saving, yeah, p- yeah, saving images as I go. I would say the same then. I just said that I couldn't answer that question because <laughs> I don't follow people accounts. I can't give you names of interior designers that I yeah. love, but I have like aesthetically folders in my Instagram and on Pinterest you know, that I enjoy, but I never make note of the designers. No, yeah. and, and that's, like, it's it's to replicate a style and a yeah. look, isn't it? Yeah, And but how do you, I guess, um, if someone wants to take bits and bits and bobs of, like, different people, like, how do you ensure it feels kind of coherent so, within your home? what I've done for each room is do, like, a mood board. So, mm-hmm. it, particularly when there's, like, I painted one room a colour, and I love the colour so much, but I just couldn't work out how to, it was, it, it was a room upstairs, and it's, like, a bright pea green, and I loved it, but like, it was just, everything, I, everything felt like it would look like a child's bedroom with mm-hmm. it, because it wasn't, like, a kind of really grown-up, in inverted commas, colour. Um, so, I basically, I mean, when I say mood board, I mean, literally just save it in a folder on my computer, on my desktop, but, you know, you can just make the images big and yeah. <laughs> see all together um so I'll save like paint samples and then I'll just save things and it might even be like a bunch of flowers or like a palette from somewhere or an yeah. info image from Instagram okay. or like mm-hmm. a product and then you start to see it all come together and you see what works and you see what doesn't and that's then how I've been like oh okay that's the vibe for that room right, okay. so anyway yeah I mean I'm that's no a good expert, tip that's, that's yeah, how I've I done it yeah well, especially when I've been lost on like mm. I know I like something but I'm not sure then what to do with it mm. yeah because I think it's it's hard isn't it seeing the bigger picture sometimes you might like an individual item and I like, think right yes no, I need that but then it's then confusing if it arrives and you're like well actually I'm not sure how this yeah. really like works in my space so I think the mood boarding ideas are like a good one yeah I also think you know we talked a lot about fashion before and about there's this rule and, and I've written about it back when I was on the fashion team um <laughs> that so Amy Smilovich who is the founder of Tibby is if you don't follow her on Instagram she's an amazing follower she gives the best fashion advice mm. like she's just really hands-on with like styling advice and finding her own style and um she's got a kind of clever kind of theory I suppose about the way to find your own personal style and she basically says you have to identify three key words that are kind of what you want to portray in mm. your wardrobe in your outfits like when you leave the house when you're dressed do you want to look I don't know, pretty, sweet and sexy? Or do you mm. want to look cool, edgy and hot? Well, like whatever your three, mm. whatever the things are that you're going for, always make sure that whenever you're buying something, whenever you're getting dressed, you're kind of like, okay, am I achieving this? Mm. And if not, then, you know, that's mm. how you can get a sense of feeling like you. And I feel like with interiors, so kind of similar. Similar. And also even, was it with you the other day on the podcast we were talking about? It was how things are such a big investment. Like mm. with a house, it just mm. feels like, God, such a daunting yeah. task every time you buy something. So then it's quite helpful to have those like, okay, does that fit my like, you know, that aesthetic mm. or like that I feel like is really me? Yeah, definitely. And like, I do the same like at the beginning of a season with clothes, like mood board it a little bit. Do you? To kind of like try and, I don't know, suss out like, because there's a lot of like newness, right? Mm. Like in, I don't know, the end of summer. And it can be sort of like, oh God, overwhelmed. What do I want to pick and choose? Like, am I buying this because it's a trend or am I buying this because I actually feel like mm. I would wear this? But like, I just tend to like save a load of things down. And then you're like, okay, like what are the kind of 
you know, common things, common themes. Um, so maybe it's, you know, if you're not sure what your interior's taste is, it's like, say down a load of things that from Pinterest that you really like the look of instantly and then just like assess all of them together and like look for commonalities. Mm. That's yeah. it. Yes, you do always give that advice. I think that's really good advice, like particularly for your wardrobe as well. Yeah, wardrobe and house. I guess yeah. it all kind of sort of translates, thing, doesn't, it? doesn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maya, do you also save outfit inspo? Like, how do you how do you put a look together? Yeah, I do. I'm always saving other people's outfits mm. and then I try and replicate them with my own wardrobe to try and see if I can mm. achieve the same look and and then I start to get an idea of the things I'm missing mm. yeah yeah that's so true and then I will only buy like a good few I I try to buy very like classic stable stuff like mm. this color is very bright right now and this is probably the only thing I've got in my wardrobe, winter wardrobe that is of color yeah mm. everything else is but it's still a staple because it's just like a round of jumper yeah so, yeah mm. yeah it's easy to wear exactly. yeah yeah but I'm constantly saving outfits and replicating God, Instagram's the best mm. yeah it's mm. the best place Sherry do you mood board anything do I actually mood board food foodie bits do you yeah how I'm do you like, do that so if I find a cookbook that I really like this is on Pinterest I will then find like would this candle go nicely with it for like do you yeah almost like a tablescaping thing and then I'll feel like what dish will go with that is there pasta that will I don't know just for like inspo yeah 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 even though if I'm not going to do anything with it it's just just, feeds your soul that's nice yeah Yeah. exactly the um, foodie bits some of the Lux girls so like I know I think both Sapna and Amrit have mood boards as their um, screensavers not screensavers like their desktop backgrounds sorry on their laptops and they um they like their vision boards really more than mood boards but it's like I keep saying every time Amrit's got her laptop open next to me I'm like god I must do that I must do that at some point because I'm not like I can't imagine ever go, buying a stack of magazines and like cutting and pasting and like creating a vision yeah. board I'm like where mm. the hell would it go in my house like, yeah. so, <laughs> like I, don't, I don't live in a uni flat like I'm not gonna put yeah. a vision board like I don't know on my fridge but I really like the idea of just having that like life inspo and like goals yeah on your laptop. Mm. a friend of mine actually um <laughs> she um she did the same thing at the beginning of the year I think it's like a, a vision board or a manifestation board yeah and, like <laughs> she was like I've tried to make it look aesthetic but it's just like really crap like stock images so she then handed it over to her friend who's like a bit more creative was like please can you make this pretty because I can't look at this every day <laughs> <laughs> I don't think vision boards are supposed to be done with stock yeah. Yeah. yeah I was like maybe it's like That's A for effort yeah. like E for yeah. execution yeah. Really tried. and then she like posted the two next to each other like you versus the girl he tells you not to worry about <laughs> <laughs> but she got it there in the end <laughs> on that note do you goal set at the start of the year yeah I do like yeah. in my head it had to be before midnight I agree on the 31st you have yeah. to be strict with it yeah. yeah so all I do is is just take like quite a half an hour pen and paper and just think about okay what do I really want this year to yeah. it's not just goals but it's just like what do I want this year to look like a bit and yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah that's what it does you do the same nice. yeah I think there's like some things you want to achieve that might be specific but other things are just yeah like areas of improvement personal mm. development and improvement and like as a couple me and Callum do it together I do yeah because yeah, yeah, then you know what you're working towards together and in your house really nice mm. and it's quite nice to almost like tell someone else so it's, there's like an element of accountability yeah, yeah. yeah. So, true. so like Matt might be like oh yeah are you gonna do this because you said you wanted to do this and I'm like yes you're right <laughs> okay I need Mr. To... Boring damn it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay yeah. that's really wise to do it together mm. I've never thought yeah. to do that Sherry, do you do, do you manifest at the beginning of the year? So I keep seeing this lucky girl syndrome yes. on TikTok. And I was like, it feels very American for me to, okay, be, so to can, say it out loud. Can you explain what it is, this trend? Yeah, so if you haven't seen it, there I think the original video were two girls and they were sitting in their car eating like these, this Chinese takeaway. Mm. And they were like, girls. We <laughs> are... <I'm> not, <laughs> girls. Um, we have been manifesting things and we saw some girl and she keeps saying out loud I'm so lucky I'm the luckiest girl alive and everything just works out for me and we did this and then we manifested having like a same room together in their dorm it was all very American but Mm -hmm. it got it's been getting so many likes and so many reposts Mm. reposts and people keep like doing the same video over and over again and I think it's to do with like the laws of attraction and like positive thinking Mm. so I'm like if I just say I'm the luckiest girl in the world. And then suddenly something really bad happens. Yeah, I'm like, you feel like an idiot. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, I'm, I don't know. I'm trying. You don't believe but it? I actually, I just don't, I can't believe it. But do you think you have to say it out loud? Yes. I think you're supposed to, yeah. Yeah, I think that's part of it. So yeah. then you like, you're speaking it into existence. Someone else can hear you. I'm yeah. going to do it now. You know what? Everything 
works out for me. Yeah, really? it actually does. Thank you. Go, girl, so, there you go, Joe. I don't think I could ever though stand in a mirror and speak to myself like that. Like, I, oh, like no. great that that's like a thing that people do, but that's I just uh, yeah, it's not a very British thing to do. Yeah, it? it is not. Yeah, it's exactly. Not. But I do like the idea behind like mm. sort of telling yourself like things are good. Like it doesn't mean that like things always go well, but perhaps yeah. you're like more resilient if gen- in general. You're yeah. kind of, like positive about things yeah yourself I think exactly. like, you, you learn as you get older don't you that like things go in waves so like everything bad passes and that also means that everything good passes but mm. I think having a mentality like that or at least mm. kind of even if you're falsely believing that like you're just the luckiest person ever makes you under makes you feel when bad things are happening like they will pass soon because good yeah. things are coming like yeah. it's just yeah. better f- maybe it helps True. you on that I, and I think positivity breeds positivity yeah, I agree. Agree. yeah. Totally definitely agree. yeah I also saw a tiktok the other day which was like um for everything that happens good or bad this year um particularly bad I'm just gonna say that's showbiz baby it's really like <laughs> great way of like if something shit happens you're just like that's showbiz yeah. baby so Love like it. several times over the last few weeks like when the car broke down I was like that's showbiz baby <laughs> this is my life <laughs> Slightly different, yeah, but it helps me cope. Helps. Sure, whatever, whatever works for you, whatever whatever works for you. Whatever I recommend works for you. it. <laughs> That's like the um, Nora Ephron thing everything is copy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Every, everything's a story, everything exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, I realized when you brought up Callum that sorry, that we, we don't have you on the sofa very often, yeah. and this is your wedding year. It Woo! is, yeah. so exciting. When is the big day? 18th of August this year. Okay, and so how, how are the plans going? Good. I mean, I feel quite quietly confident that we're ticking a lot of the big ticket items off the list, making our way through it nicely. Great. Callum thinks otherwise. Does He's it? having like mini meltdowns. <laughs> is that oh. because you, he thinks, like, is that because you have different priorities or think different things are big deals? We have very different attitudes in general towards just like planning and organisation. Mm. Like I am quite a laid back I'm kind of like the swan type person mm. that looks calm on the surface but I'm doing stuff yeah. but I just don't like talk about it shout about it he's like a tick list action plan project planner mm. everything's gonna be done by a certain date everyone's got a name next to it oh, this is your responsibility see, that's your okay. <laughs> you know he's, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. he's strict on it yeah which is good because <laughs> I have to say sometimes I can be a last minute person okay. so it's good to have that accountability. Especially for a wedding, you don't want to be last minute. No, but mm. I think we're doing quite well to Okay, so what's done? Mm. We've done venue, dress, guest list, band, DJ, um, food. Great. Oh, so that's that's awesome. the majority. Oh, I think yeah. we've done quite a lot. That's everything. Yeah. yeah. You went to the church this weekend? We had a Zoom call, actually, with the oh, sorry. Okay. which was lovely, actually. Aww. He was so nice, and he's actually quite, like, Banterous. Great. Ooh. Cool no. young vicar. I like so, well, he's not young at all. Okay, but cool. Oh, got a great great. <laughs> he sadly is on holiday. We picked the one week in oh, August that he's on oh. holiday. So, oh, so it won't be him. We've got a different Reverend okay. Paul instead. I wonder if Reverend Paul's oh. is jokes. Apparently. Fingers crossed. Yes. Also fun. Um, Graham tells me he's nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all you need. Aww. But we are this Friday. I've got Friday off work and we've got a big day of wedding stuff on okay. Friday. So Yay. we're going to the venue. We're seeing the marquee lady. We're seeing the florist. I'm having a hair trial. Oh my God. Talk about the day. menu. We'll probably try and meet Paul. Yeah. <laughs> that's so <laughs> exciting. That's, so that's like a proper, yeah. I feel like you're really organized for yeah. eight time. I yeah. think so too. Yeah. Callum. How do you feel about it? <laughs> I feel happy, excited. Yay. I mean, I think one thing people don't tell you, I don't know if this is a new thing. Obviously, all weddings historically have been expensive, but 2023... Yeah, I think it's particularly bad now. Really? Oh, mm. my gosh. Mm. I had a number in my mind, and I thought, you yeah, know, that's a lot of money, but mm. I'm happy to do it. I've wanted this, like, my whole life. Mm. I'm really excited. You might as well just add 30 grand onto oh, it. Oh, Are you kidding? Oh, wow. Well, I remember, because I remember Clary on our team Crazy. used um, used the, uh, go- amazing photographers for her wedding. And I yeah. remember um, just when you got engaged, right, she she had booked them, obviously. She got, ma- she got married in 2022, so booked them, I think even maybe 2020, she got engaged. Yeah, I think she booked them in 21 for 2022. Yeah, fine. Yeah. But then their their prices had like doubled by the time it came yeah. around. Mm-hmm. And that's the case with so many suppliers, finding right? finding it with everything. Yeah. yeah, it's quite hard. I think in particular bands photographers and videographers mm. the prices for those have gone through the roof okay oh, wow yeah. that's really depressing so you really need to shop around and actually top tip i thought this sounds really obvious but i have negotiated with pretty much every supplier i've spoken to i have friends that got married last year and all of them have told me i never did that i just took the number that people yeah, gave yeah interesting i'm not sure i, I never did that. either no which makes me think maybe i should have tried interesting that you feel like 
what you have negotiated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I had a call with, um, was it a photographer? I think it was. And she was really lovely and really honest with me. And she said, I actually know other photographers that make up numbers just to see if people take them. Really? They just <gasps> plug one of them Yeah. What? Which you can kind of, no, you can blame them for. <laughs> yeah, right? it's, yeah. I mean, someone's yeah. willing why to not? pay it. Yeah. 100%. Wow. Don't yeah. get it if you don't ask. No, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. True. Yeah. so true. Don't take the number someone gives you. Yeah. That's it. a good tip though. That's such a good tip. Because yeah. I would just assume you just have to pay what people say. And um, also you can always say, like if you've got a budget in mind for a photographer, you could, you know, they can go in with theirs. You can say, right, well, I was thinking yeah. something more like this. So yeah. can we meet in yeah. next place? Or They're not, yeah. They won't yeah. just like not reply to yeah. you because no. you've asked. Well, and as yeah. the worst they can say is no. Is no, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Literally. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you most excited for? Oh, that's a hard... Well, to be honest, it is just everyone in one place yeah. having a big yeah. party. Oh. We're going to have quite a young wedding in the sense that we don't have like a huge old family and lots of family friends that all our parents are inviting mm-hmm. yeah. so most people that are going at my age so the 30th really so and the majority of the guest list is friends okay yeah. so i'm just excited for us yeah, so together. That's yeah. That's yeah. yeah okay we well, must come back and keep us posted yeah. very exciting someone has said what do you think will be the biggest trend of 2023 that is a very large question Ooh, but cool. i might put it to you in your in your various categories so i'm going to talk ask you about fashion yeah you about food hotels mm-hmm. travel and you, category. your category is um, media, social media, TikTok, Instagram. You are our okay. marketing director after all. Yeah. So trends for, trends for social. Polly, I'll come to you first. What, what's the biggest trend that you're excited for for 2023? I'm quite excited for like, <laughs> sound like I'm just saying it because I'm wearing it, but I feel like we're going to see a lot of like cargo vibes, wide leg trousers. And it's sort of been a bit of a trend this year, but more like, Low rise, I think, is just going to grow ever more. That scares me. Um, me too. Do you know what, though? I thought I was scared, but then actually I tried these on today and they're quite low rise and I don't hate it. How low rise is low rise? Should I stand up? No, because then people listening can't hear. So, like, does it, like, if, we, if we're saying high now. rise, yeah, it's your belly rush. Where oh, is yeah, it? Like, when I stand rushing? up, my, it's like below, um, it's, it's like sitting just above my hip bone. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. Uh, yeah, so maybe more like a mid-rise. Mm, yeah, maybe like it's that's, not like a low slide. Maybe that's like low-rise <laughs> yeah. me, because I only, I usually yeah, yeah, above my belly button. Literally I'm like, normally, I'm so brave. <laughs> my boobs are normally touching the top yeah, of my trousers. So. so this is like my, you know, millennial version of the low-rise mm-hmm. trend. But yes, I think, I think that's my, my like, one. prediction. It's quite a nice mm. way to do really comfy, mm. but still looking a bit, like it's somewhere yeah. between denim and trackies. Yes. yes. Yeah. Indeed. Happy days. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, oh, fashion. Mm. Putting you on the spot. We talked about this on the show the other day. I said metallics. Lots mm. of metallics everywhere. My new, my new thing that I re- well, I really want a silver trench. Ooh. But I, I know. Um, <laughs> but I don't know if that's too extra. Like I was thinking about it. I was like, how do I actually wear it? So then I actually think a leather trench is where yes. I'm going next for, mm. yeah, I for like I a leather onwards. trench actually mm. yeah you've like, got one do you say no I haven't got one oh. I, I was in like I just I feel like that's in my yeah like, like my brain like it should moment. be like yeah cool like, maybe, right but like maybe not even metallic but just like a different colour yeah exactly so maybe like Ooh. a burgundy yeah. or like but um, oh, nice. Naked have actually got some really good ones yeah um, but yeah there's this silver um, I can't remember if it's rotate or remain yeah. um, trench so exciting <laughs> no, it's really cool that's so cool. yeah that needs to get that out of my brain um, Sherry what about Food, hotels, restaurants and hotels, what's going on? Oh, so I think a lot of unusual food trends this year. Heather's doing a feature on site this week, if you're interested. Mm. Um, snails is a big one. Oh, I love Which snails. I was like, oh, okay, I can personally get down with that. Yeah. yeah love it. How are they trending? Like, what, so they're just going to be different? In the UK, because I guess you, you can't yeah, really get them on that many really, menus. Yeah, so lots of small suppliers are um, growing their own little snail farms. That's quite no sweet. Way. Yeah, it's shame that you end up eating eat them. them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Sorry until you know what it's for. Yeah, yeah. and lots of... Um, um, lots of tinned produce, things mm. that are long yes. life. Um, this restaurant, I wanted to ask you about it, Salty Girl. Have you heard of yes. this restaurant? Yes. I really want to go. It looks great. So this I is a Boston that. export. There's one in Boston and it's spelled Salty, S-A-L-T-I-E. I don't know why I'm talking about this before I've even gone because this is, <laughs> everyone's going to get there first. But it's <laughs> it's um, it's, um like a, it's a fish restaurant. Yeah. All the recipes are made from tinned fish. Oh, cool. Different types of tinned fish. It's so just, cool. But it looks just, like unreal. Yeah, good, it right? looks great. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Mm. I'd like to get there. And then travel wise, I think everyone this year is booking like a big bucket list trip as yeah. opposed to lots of little city breaks. Yeah. People are going for like a big go to Australia, go to okay. the US for two weeks, do like a big yeah. lifetime. Because yeah. people have been like saving those trips for yeah. post yeah. pandemic vibes. Mm. So yeah, this is the the year to yeah. go big, I if think. If you can afford it. Yeah, if you can afford it, yeah. yeah. Lots of London openings this year as well, right? So many. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
yes, most exciting. excited for. Annoying. Mandarin Oriental in Mayfair. I think it's going to be really cool. Nice. Yeah, it looks very slick. Ooh. Ooh. Maya? Yes. Maya Tell us. Marketing media. trends. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if this is really obvious to people or not, but I think this year is all going to be about not overthinking it. Mm, Authenticity yeah. gets banded about a lot, mm. but generally just showing people's real life quickly, not overthinking the feed mm. or how something looks or how you're trying to portray yourself. I think we're going to see everyone be a lot more real online from businesses through to people. Mm. I mean, you're already seeing people's vlogs like literally littered mm. across every single platform you can think of. Mm. So true. But I think people aren't stupid anymore yeah. and they just want honesty. So true. And mm. actually, as the second we started to do that and sort of relax about it, yeah, we went viral on TikTok. We actually <laughs> did. Millions, guys. Millions. Yeah. We are a big deal on TikTok. <laughs> um, all right. So thanks, everyone. We'll leave it there. Follow us on TikTok if you're not already. Yeah. At Sherlux. Um, check out Lux Girls as well. Yes. V- rivaling us for very good TikTok content, actually. If you have any feedback, please do email podcast at Sherlux.com. We love hearing from you. Don't forget uh, to look out for the question box every week on social. And do rate, review, subscribe. And don't worry. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.